Hey, it's Andrew, Stephen, and Adam. Before we get started, this episode was filmed at the beginning of the year before we started social distancing due to COVID-19. Yes, we are currently still social distancing, but we wanted to share these great restaurants with you, even though dining out is not the same as it usually is right now. Today, we're doing rice. Is it worth it? Potentially the most anticipated episode of Worth It ever. By who? Uh, by me. <laughs> okay. Uh, by me, by yours truly. Rice is my favorite carb and potentially my favorite dish. And before we get started on today's adventure, special thank you to Toyota, who hooked us up with this Highlander to be the new Worth It mobile this season. Today on Worth It, we're gonna be trying three rice dishes at three drastically different price points to find out which one is the most worth it at its price. I'm thinking about rice, you know, we've eaten it so many times on this show. It's an ingredient. It's a dish. It can take so many forms. Say rice and then I'll say a thing. Rice. Noodle. Rice. Porridge. Rice. Pudding. Rice. Cake. Wait, reverse it now. Sticky. Rice. Fried. Rice. Crispy. Rice. Nice. Rice. We're eating it. Rice. Okay, so where are we going first? We're on our way to Azuma restaurant. We're gonna see owner Hideki and general manager Hitoshi. I'm very excited because this restaurant was actually referred to us by our good friend, Sean Miro. Mm -hmm. He will be joining us for the tasting. He said they make the most fantastic onigiri. Here we are at Azuma restaurant. With our good friend, Sean Mura. What's up? How did it feel recommending a restaurant to Worth It? It's pretty stressful, because you don't know if it's gonna be good enough, and then also you don't want people to show up and make it harder to get into. Oh, I yeah. see. You're walking the door, and there's a really great energy and vibe to it. it it's kind of like a cheers feeling. Can you tell us a little bit of the background of Azuma? Uh, we purchased this restaurant in uh, 2002. It was owned by a Japanese national, built by the Okamoto family in the early 50s. And why has it been important for you guys to maintain this restaurant as an izakaya? Well, we liked it for one. Izakaya style is be analogous to the Spanish tapas, lots of little things. But in addition to that, we have the regular menu items. Asparagus beef is very popular here. Sashimi sara. And what makes a really good onigiri? Rice is very important. We are using hikari rice. Simple, but tastes really good. So it's best to start with like a plain Onigiri. It's just gonna be this triangle that's a little bit thick, that's like just the right firmness, have maybe a little bit of salt and a piece of seaweed, but otherwise it's just gonna be this nice subtle flavor because it's just straight up rice. Whoa, these are giant. So this is their most standard version, no filling, not grilled, rice, salt, seaweed. It does have a satisfying heft. It has the weight of a perfectly shaped snowball. Mm -hmm. Like I wanna yes. throw this yes. at somebody. Yeah, cheers. cheers. Oh, the rice is naturally sweet. Where are you getting sweet? Are you tasting salt? I'm tasting salt. Am I confused? Wait, Adam, please confirm for me. Maybe I'm crazy. I got too much seaweed, it just tastes like salt. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing how satisfying it is. Because it's just, it's so few elements. It's really satisfying. Wait, eat that now. So this is um, takwon. It's like a pickled daikon. Mmm, love that. Yeah, That's like, sweet. I think we're gonna find out in this episode that uh, my taste buds are broken. <laughs> so this is the base onigiri. Yaki onigiri, yaki comes from the verb yaku, which means like to grill. This is how you get like teriyaki, it's how you get okonomiyaki, it's how you oh. get yakisoba. Fun fact. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna brush it with a soy sauce based sort of mixture. Then they're gonna be grilling it. Charred rice is one of my favorite flavors in mm. the world. Could have salmon. Salmon's really popular one. That's my <laughs> personal favorite. Umeboshi is like a pickled plum. It contrasts nicely with the rice flavor. Steven, which one do you want? I saw um, the fish egg on the menu. We're talking about contrast. Look at that crust. And then just the smell you should be getting, like this nice toasty. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. yeah. I never gets old. Wow, that's almost like a fried rice rice ball. I mean, I guess it is. If you'll notice in one bite, you're getting this crispy outside, which is like totally charred to perfection. And then inside is still this really nice rice that's taken in the flavor of the soy sauce. Yeah. I just got to the fish egg part. Woo. Yeah, very fishy. I get it though. This is actually amazing. It does go with the toasted flavor of the rice very well. It's it, so good. Considering it yeah. is mostly just rice. Hey, not just rice. Like rice is well, rice. You're just Andrew. I'm not getting in this. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I got you. I know what you mean. Thank you so much to Sean for guiding us through our Azuma dining experience. Hope to go there again with him. I know we're about to eat two more amazing rice dishes. I have a feeling today they're all my worth at winter. You just literally cannot go wrong with rice. Steven, it's time for a little rice, rice fact. fact. And in fact, this is going to be a pop quiz rice fact. How many cultivated varieties of rice are there in the world? Oh no. Take a guess. Oh, uh, this one's hard. I'm gonna say 12,534. 12,000. The answer is 40,000. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I'll take that. It's like uh, I'm living in Pokemon Red. Okay, I've only explored the 150 kinds of rice. My rice index is uh, it's expanding. Well, to expand our knowledge of distinct and delicious rice types, mm -hmm. our next restaurant is going to feature a very special type of rice. We're now on our way to Lakshan, where we're going to see Chef Sang Yoon and try his heirloom black rice. Very nice. Black rice. Lakshan was my first traditional restaurant. Came from a world of very high-end French fine dining. Lakshan is sort of my rendition of how I perceive Southeast Asia, a place that's full of mystery and incredible history. And this is where I interpret Southeast Asia through a very modern lens. My rendition of beef and broccoli. Completely change a dish. And we do some things that are very, very traditional, but there's a lot of things that we use that are tricks. We use a lot of modern cooking technique that was not available and is not traditional. We make something called puff beef tendon, and it will look like, from afar, a pork grind. But we call it the bovine cut into the chicharron. So I think authentic but not traditional. You get a taste of something that is so ancient and it's still incredibly relevant. The, the cuisine would not be possible with only old or only new. They, they have to harmonize. So tell us a little bit about this black heirloom rice dish. So the black rice dish is also another mysterious ingredient. People used to call it forbidden rice. And I was like, well, why is it forbidden? The story is that it was only once available to royalty. And if you were just a normal person, you weren't allowed to have it. Although it is not technically forbidden, it isn't incredibly widely available even in China. So I wanted to make a rice dish that was about the rice itself. There's a small amount of Cantonese sweet sausage called lepsheng. The rice is the star of the show and not simply a side. I think that's a completely different perspective on rice. The thing about black rice is it's very forgiving in that it can take on a lot of the heat from the wok. The black rice actually just gets smokier. So you get almost that light scorch, that waft of smoke. I've actually never seen black rice cooked this way. I'm willing to bet this is going to be a completely new experience. Cheers, Steven. Mmm. Whoa. Yeah. It's a nice, what? chewy green yes, rice. Yes, it's chewy. Yeah. Wow, I thought I was an expert on rice. I don't know. You've been stumped to... by rice. How do you describe that texture? It's springy, bouncy? Like seedy, almost? Mm hmm. I want to buy this rice. I'm gonna find out where they get this. They have a guy. I want that guy. Get me that guy. You wanna have some egg with it now? Now this is what I like to see. Now that is the familiar mm -hmm. taste I yeah. know and love. But then earthy, nutty, herbaceous, other rice flavor. I notice every single grain of rice when I eat it. Each grain holds up by itself. All of the uh, other stuff in this dish stay very separate until you get a bite from them. Yeah. You're eating it. Ooh, this is good. <gasps> Whoa. Ooh. That's also good. When I saw this bowl of rice, yeah. my like mind it gets stuck. It's, it's like, like you're looking at an image in negative. Like why is the white part black? <laughs> I sh like I shouldn't be eating it. I guess that's why it's called the forbidden rice. Gosh, what a flavorful grain of rice. I think it has made me reconsider my own personal rice options at home. I'm so used to just getting the one I grew up on. Mm -hmm. But I think it's time to start buying other bags of rice. So we've had two savory rice dishes. Mm -hmm. Our last rice dish is actually gonna be a dessert. But before we get there, it's time for one more rice fact. While the Great Wall of China was being built in the 15th and 16th centuries, workers used a porridge made of calcium carbonate and rice as a mortar to hold the stones together. Stephen Lim loves a good chemical engineering rice fact. Take wow. that. <laughs> <laughs> the foundation to my diet and the foundation to a mortar. I wonder if people s snuck bites of it and inadvertently cemented their stomachs shut. <laughs> So we're on our way to our last rice dish. We're going to Auburn, where we're gonna speak with Chef Eric 
and we're actually gonna be eating at the restaurant's bar. The dish is white chocolate risotto, which is the creation of pastry chef Diane. Also has white truffle on it. As somebody who has eaten rice his entire life, this will be probably the craziest rice dish yeah. I will ever eat. Auburn is a modern product-driven restaurant that looks to deformalize fine dining, make it approachable. I mean, the first thing I noticed was what you're wearing. Is this your daily workwear? Is this yeah, what you're course. wearing during service? It is, it is. I'll throw in a collared shirt at night. <laughs> so deformalizing fine dining, what does that mean at Auburn? To me, it means removing the rules. Typically, you go into a fine dining, you're told how many courses you need to take, everyone takes the same thing. So you wanted to deformalize fine dining and then if that's too formal, you still have the bar. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we want to make it that's energetic awesome. for everyone, right? So where the dining room is tasty menu format, the bar is completely a la carte. We use the same products, just in a different way. So Seabream is a beautiful product. This is from Japan. It's very well treated. So it's brought on the boat, line caught. So the flesh is pristine. We really want to highlight the filet in the dining room. And then in the bar, obviously the collar is typically an off cut, more fatty. So our bar gives us the ability to offer that to guests. We're going to be having this risotto, which is a dessert. It is a dessert. <laughs> Yeah. is between a dessert and something savory, which makes it very unique yeah. and super delicious. The white chocolate risotto. Yes. With white truffle. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm just wondering how you came up with this dish. We were getting in these beautiful hazelnuts, like the best hazelnuts that I've ever tasted. And then we were getting in our orders of white truffles. We use a very good risotto rice it's called Aquarello. After they harvest it, they age it for one to three years. It enhances the flavor, but also it makes it so the rice can absorb as much liquid as possible, but still maintaining like the structure of the rice where you cook it and it's not mushy and you eat it and you still feel the individual grains of rice in your mouth while you're chewing it. So we're here at the bar of this beautiful restaurant that's behind this wall. I like that. It's like an unplanned fine dining meal. Since it's a dessert, mm -hmm. though we should build up to the experience. Right. So first we're getting the crispy pig ear. I grew up in North Carolina. We have a lot of crispy pork rinds. We braise pig's ears for about 12 hours. We slice them, we dehydrate them, and then we fry them. And what we get is like a very puffed chicharron. We top it with sea salt, vinegar powder, and fresh black pepper. Flat in. Wow. Chips at a bar. This is I the like it. strangest texture. It reminds me of like a packet of ramen noodles before you boil it. Yes. Cheers, Steve. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Mmm. Wow. Wow. I could just eat that oh. forever. The vinegar kind of like tastes sweet against all of the other stuff happening there. That's crazy. Whoa. And this is kind of like a salt and vinegar chip, but on kind of like a porky mm -hmm. puff. It's scary because uh... <laughs> we've got some shrapnel flying off the mouth there. <laughs> the Seabream collar is very unique. Smaller, delicious. We cure it in a mixture of salt, sugar, and citrus fern. Citrus and fish go really well together. In California here, we have very unique citrus called finger lime. It looks like little caviar pearls. So we come up with a little bit of spice, a lot of acidity, a little bit of funk. It's not dressed, it's very simply put on a plate. Cheers. Mmm. Oh. When, when fish is good, it is the best meat. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Ooh. That's heaven. I could eat 30 of these. Why would you want to order a dessert dish of all things that has white truffle? Well, I think if you're really interested in food and you want to try something that you haven't tried before, it would naturally speak to you. I think it's just something you're going to have to try and you guys should just let me know. Okay. <laughs> At first I thought, huh, it smells like uh, kind of a nutty dessert. And now I'm back into, huh, mm. it smells like I'm about to eat pasta. <laughs> I, I feel like the world just, you know when like there's a portal? We're at the portal about to step into another realm. Yeah. All right, Stephen, let's, let's step into that realm. Cheers, Cheers Stephen. Into the portal we go. Oh. Mmm. I feel like my muscles when I eat mm. this are just expanding mm. and I want to stretch mm. and I don't know 
mm. but causing that feeling. This is really good. It's a lot sweeter than I thought it was going to be. I thought the truffle was gonna overpower all the sweetness that happened. The rice pudding vibes I'm getting. Yeah, it is like a very nice rice pudding. It's very comforting. Yeah, the truffle is not that weird in here. I think it shares a nuttiness with the hazelnut, which shares a butteriness with the white chocolate, which goes with the vanilla broth that the risotto was cooked in. It's actually not very crazy at all. That's one of the most intelligent things you've ever done on this show. Well done. I, I can't get over the idea that I'm just eating a truffled Rice Krispie Treat <laughs> porridge. <laughs> Rice Krispie Treat with truffle. It's so good. There's no moment of like, I'm confused by what I'm eating, but maybe it makes sense. It's just like immediately delicious. I am completely satisfied with that rice journey. It was a uh, very satisfying day of eating rice. What was your favorite thing of the episode that wasn't rice? My favorite part of the episode, where we talk about not the food, the design of Auburn. It reminds me of uh, some Danish alternate life that I'll never get to live. How about you? My answer is tea salad at Lakshan. Mm. The salad, the salad was maybe the best thing at Lakshan. Whoa, bold words. Yeah. All right, Andrew, which one was your worth it winner? My worth it winner is gonna go to Lakshan. Woo! That black heirloom rice is so unique. It tastes so delicious and different. You know what's crazy is that I'm about to choose uh, something and that leaves out the other one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I can't believe that other one is not either of our worth it winners because my worth it winner goes to Azuma. Mm. The rice ball. It is the simplest version of this dish that could have been done. My winner does not go to the grilled onigiri. Oh, really? It actually goes to the plain rice ball. It's the simplicity of it, cannot be beaten. But I can't believe Auburn is neither, because uh, that was yeah, spectacular. Auburn, Auburn is really next level. Adam, what was your worth it winner? Adam says Auburn. Man, Auburn was so good. Next, we're going on a little road trip out of LA. Road trip. <laughs> <laughs>